Helping at this hour, history set to be made tonight after more than 20 years and two major league soccer championships. The crew, along with their fans, are saying goodbye to the historic crew stadium. The team is taking on Chicago tonight at 730. Sierra Lucas is there live at the stadium for us tonight. And Sierra, the excitement has already started. And of course, uh, Clay Hall has been following this team since the very start. And Clay, this team is leaving the stadium on a positive note after coming away with that MLS Cup last season. Turning out to the forecast, after a wet few days, a lot of fans of of course, no doubt holding out hope that the rain will stay away, of course, for this evening's game. Uh, Caroline Cohen, track it all for us tonight. Caroline, you have the uh, fans' fun in your hands right now. Another violent start to the weekend across the city of Columbus. A series of shootings leaving several communities on edge tonight as police work to investigate those crimes. Community leaders are calling for peace, hoping to save lives. A frantic search underway for a missing Columbus woman. That 28-year-old hasn't been seen in nearly two weeks. Tonight, family and friends taking matters into their own hands, launching a search party just hours ago. Jesse Starkey has the very latest on that investigation. Happening right now, the Pickaway County Fair kicking off this weekend, and you can expect plenty of changes, of course, to safety, and it's all thanks to Tyler's Law. Tonight, we have a full breakdown of what you can expect at all local fairs moving forward. All right, turning now to the forecast, another beautiful day across the area today. Plenty of sunshine and, of course, plenty of heat as well. Caroline Cohen is tracking it all for us tonight. Uh, Caroline, what can we expect for the rest of the night? Well, we're going to stay hot. After coming away with the MLS Cup last season, the crew is building a reputation as one of the premier teams in Major League Soccer. This facility is yet another step in the process of building a long-term winner. Three, two, one. Bang! <laughs> With the quick clip of a ribbon, it's official. The Ohio Health Performance Center opening for business. The one-of-a-kind new base of operations for the crew. The facility first rate, located on the team's original home site. It houses team headquarters along with player training grounds. The complex is also adjacent to the new City of Columbus Community Sports Park. Now's the right time because once new ownership stepped up, stepped in to save this team along with our supporters. Their vision was to be a consistent contender in MLS. And what that means is you have to give the resources to the players and to the coaches to do their job. And, it, and now in our league, part of that is having a world-class training environment. This place has it all. From the weight room to the players' lounge and the full-service kitchen, there's even a seasonal bubble over the stadium field, giving the team every advantage to stay focused. So this is a phenomenal facility, not only in the MLS, but really we didn't want to judge ourselves here with MLS facilities. We wanted to go beyond what's in MLS and create an environment that we really could take to pros in Europe and South America and have them come in here and say, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. Because truthfully, the guys may spend more time in this building than they spend in their homes. Team officials say this facility will give the players a perfect environment for improving performance and of course continuing their pursuit for another championship, something that will no doubt make crew fans very happy. Rodney Dunnigan, ABC6 News. Volunteers with this program are going above and beyond to make an impact on the lives of kids here in the Linden community, pulling them off the streets and onto a better path. For weeks now, we've been reporting on the rise in youth crime and violence across the city. For Ralph Carter and his team of volunteers with We Are Linden, it seems like these that have pushed them into action. It is painful to see, man. These, these young people are losing their lives to senseless gun violence, man. It has to stop, and we need the community to get involved. The group looking to give kids a positive life outlook through mentorship and outreach programs. So I'm going to get a dunk today giving of their time and efforts to make a difference. The question I ask for the youth is, do you want to live? And if you want to live, these are the things that you have to do. For kids, the program leading them on a path to a brighter future. Kept me off the um, streets and stuff, away from the violence and guns and stuff like that. I appreciate it. I love the way they just come together and have us do a lot of work, make money, trying to get us off the streets. For Carter, the work, a labor of love, confident he's making a difference. And they just want to know that you actually care, that you're going to be there, and you're not just here just because it's your job. This is not my job. This, this is my passion. This work is certainly not easy. Funding for the program comes mostly through donations and clothing sold on the group's website. Everything from T-shirts to hats. 
Organizers, though, say they're pretty confident that the work they're doing is making a big impact in this community. On your side in Linden, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC6 News. We sort of have what we call the uh, the patio cushions for volunteers with this program are going above and beyond to make an impact on the lives of kids here in the Linden community, pulling them off the streets and onto a better path. For weeks now, we've been reporting on the rise in youth crime and violence across the city. For Ralph Carter and his team of volunteers with We Are Linden, it seems like these that have pushed them into action. It is painful to see, man. These these young people are losing their lives to senseless gun violence, man. It has to stop, and we need the community to get involved. The group looking to give kids a positive life outlook through mentorship and outreach programs. So I'm going to get a dunk today giving of their time and efforts to make a difference. The question I ask for the youth is, do you want to live? And if you want to live, these are the things that you have to do. For kids, the program leading them on a path to a brighter future. Kept me off the um, streets and stuff, away from the violence and guns and stuff like that. I appreciate it. I love the way they just come together and have us do a lot of work, make money, trying to get us off the streets. For Carter, the work, a labor of love, confident he's making a difference. And they just want to know that you actually care, that you're going to be there, and you're not just here just because it's your job. This is not my job. This, this is my passion. This work is certainly not easy. Funding for the program comes mostly through donations and clothing sold on the group's website. Everything from t-shirts to hats. Organizers, though, say they're pretty confident that the work they're doing is making a big impact in this community. On your side in Linden, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC6 News. The big game will be going down here at the shoe, but the action will start days before with a week of events. Now, this will be the largest tourist event to hit the city in more than a year, bringing a major boost to local business. If this was the church, I'd probably be running up and down the aisles and jumping over pews. A lot of excitement today from the team putting together this year's Classic for Columbus football showdown between HBCU rivals, Central State University, and Kentucky State University. O-H! The game and events leading up to it bringing thousands of visitors to the city and millions to businesses looking to bounce back from the pandemic. Hotel rooms, uh, retail spending, restaurant spending, the uh, dollars will come to about 10 million this year. Celia Anderson, director of business development for the Greater Columbus Sports Commission, says the classic is a key start in getting the city's economy back on track. Well, it's been difficult to kind of get new business on the books, but it's starting to turn around and we are happy to be here. This year's event could be just the start. After hosting the game in Cleveland and Cincinnati, organizers are looking to possibly make Columbus the long-term home for this HBCU celebration. The big game is set for Saturday, August 28th, but organizers tell us that they're not only excited for the action expected on the field, but also the impact that this game and visitors will have on the entire city as well. On your side at the shoe, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC6 News.